Right now, we are standing at the original 1870 location of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. If we look to our southwest, we will see that the lighthouse has been moved 2,900 feet inland. The original lighthouse location is directly behind me. This view that we are taking in right now has evolved over the years. When Dexter Stetson and his crew of 100 foremen broke ground right here in December of 1868, the shoreline was 1,600 feet from here. Looking at the view right now, we can tell that there's less than 50 feet of shoreline remaining. To understand how the lighthouse went from here to behind us, we must first understand why it was moved. Right now, we are located on a barrier island, essentially a sandbar. Located about four feet below us is a water table. The engineers, or Dexter Stetson, used this water table to his advantage when he was constructing the foundation and ultimately the tallest brick lighthouse in North America. His original plan was to dig down roughly 10 feet below grade level. When he got to about four feet below ground, he ran into the water table. He erected a coffer dam, dug about three feet more, and from there he laid a fresh yellow pine timber foundation. Once he met back up with that water table, he released the coffer dam so the water could flow down into the yellow pine timber, ultimately preserving it for thousands of years. This plan by Dexter Stetson would only work if the shoreline were to stay away. As we can see, the shoreline on a good storm would probably be hitting the foundation of the lighthouse if it were still here. That is why the lighthouse had to be moved. Because of the floating foundation on top of the water table, engineers were concerned that as the shoreline eroded and the waves grew closer, that those waves and the salt water would penetrate that fresh water table, uh, rotting the foundation in a matter of weeks. So engineers had to act quickly to move the lighthouse to a safer location so that the lighthouse would be preserved for generations to come. Because we are on a sandbar, the ground had to be graded, graveled, compacted, so that the 4,800 ton lighthouse would not sink. Because remember, sand is constantly shifting and moving. The reason we have a lighthouse here is because of the diamond shoals and the currents that form dangerous sandbars out there. Although we are on land, the sand is still very difficult to build on. Looking around the original location of the 1870 Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, we see groins. We also see stones, and if we look closely in the sand in some areas over there, we will also see sandbags. These are all attempts by the government to control the erosion and try to slow down Mother Nature so that the lighthouse could continue to be in this location. When they first built the lighthouse in 1870, the shoreline was already 1,500 feet away. By 1933, less than 100 feet of the shoreline remained. In 1936, the government actually decided to abandon the lighthouse due to the threat of erosion. The lighthouse sat abandoned for about 15 years until 1950 when the government came back down here and had noticed that it actually gained a small amount of shoreline uh, to the point where the lighthouse was safe to go back into operation. From 1950 until the early 70s, the erosion came and gone as well as the beach nourishment projects did. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, several beach nourishment projects went down just on this beach right in front of us here. Because of the strength and the power of the ocean, it is nearly impossible to control such a dynamic area with methods such as groins, rocks, sandbags. They even attempted to use artificial seaweed. Although all of these methods may have worked for a short time, they were by no means the answer to the long-term location of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. In 1987, the Park Service reached out to the National Science Academy and asked them to, to conduct a study to see what they would recommend doing with the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. The study concluded in April of 1988 and ultimately reached the conclusion that the best way to preserve the lighthouse for future generations was to move it to a safer location. At a price of $11.8 million, Expert House Movers, an international chimney corporation, was awarded the contract to move the lighthouse and began work in December 1998. The head engineer of the process said in an interview that anything made by man can be moved by man. So on June 17, 1999, the lighthouse moved its first 10 feet. So how was the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse moved? Well, the first step during the months of March and February 1999 they worked to clear the area, the path, so that the lighthouse had a clear path to move on to its current location. 
The first thing they did is they dug a six foot ditch around the base of the lighthouse to expose the foundation. From there, they took a diamond studded cable saw and made a cut just below the grade level so that they could separate the base from the foundation. From there, they began a mining, coring, and shoring process of removing chunks of the foundation. And for every chunk of foundation that was removed, a shoring tower was put in place to bear the weight of the lighthouse. Once the whole foundation was removed and the shoring towers were in place, engineers took beams and threaded them through the shoring towers. Once the beams were in place, they took high-powered jacks and Hillman rollers. They clamped those jacks and high-powered rollers to the beams and lifted the framing system to meet the base of the lighthouse. From there, the lighthouse was jacked six feet up into the air. Once it was six feet up into the air, the lighthouse was pushed using those Hillman rollers and high-powered jacks and a jack and slide technique of pushing the lighthouse in five-foot increments to its resting place 2,900 feet to our southwest. Once the lighthouse arrived at its current location, the lighthouse was lowered using the reverse engineering that got it up six feet in the air to begin with. So as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the lighthouse move and look to the future, one may ask, will the lighthouse have to be moved again? Due to barrier island dynamics, it is more likely than not that the lighthouse will have to be moved again. The long-term future of the lighthouse is hard to predict. However, the National Park Service is currently planning for a comprehensive restoration of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse in the next few years. The work will address the findings in the 2016 Historic Structures Report. Work will include masonry repairs, lantern room repairs, anti-corrosion treatments on all metalwork, and new paint. Several historic features of the lighthouse that were either removed or altered over the years will be restored, creating a more historically accurate experience for visitors. Historic preservation is a constant job. The mission of the National Park Service is to preserve our nation's stories and historic places. The move of the lighthouse 20 years ago was part of that ongoing preservation story that continues today. Thank you all for joining us today as we walked from the original 1870 Cape Hatteras location to its current location, located right just behind me. Uh, we hope to see you down here soon, whether it's walking the path or climbing America's tallest brick lighthouse.